What's going on here with Nate? I want to show you how I made this and turned it into this. And in that production, I want to show you how I went from scratch with this particular beat, what the ideas were and the breakdown of it. And I'll show you the recording phase, how to record the vocals, what I did to record the vocals, all the mixing and mastering of that as well. And then the final product so you can kind of hear what it sounds like in the end. So hopefully this is of benefit to you guys. Hopefully you'll learn something in this. I'm going to do this in a couple of parts, maybe three parts uh, to cover off every aspect of this. And uh, we'll start with the production phase first. So let's get straight to that right now. All right, so we're here in FL Studio, which you can currently see. This is where I produced the beat and came up with the concept and the ideas of the beat. Uh, so first off, to, to give you kind of an idea, I used a few different instruments. So I've used this one here, which is FM8. Uh, this is a VST that I don't see used that frequently nowadays, uh, but it's one that kind of gave me the inspiration for this actual track. And uh, the actual sound that I've used uh, is called String Bells. So. If, <laughs> kind of giving away all the secrets here, but uh, I won't give away too much because I kind of edited the sound a bit on that as well. But uh, so we'll get straight into how that sounds and what it is on this particular track. What I actually did, uh, you can kind of see it's kind of a simple kind of beat here, not too much going on. Uh, there's Omnisphere, which I've also used as well. And then I've got my own kind of samples that I use. Uh, primarily, most of the samples that I use come out of native instruments, which is the machine. Uh, I usually bounce them out of native instruments whilst in this project. And then I kind of just use them inside of the FLs sampler uh, that you would normally see in FL Studio. I, I really like the way that sampler works in this. It just really has a, a good way of tuning the samples um, to the key that you want. So. You've got all that there going on. So that's kind of neat. Um, to be honest, I haven't used FL Studio a whole lot until up until recently. Um, I usually use Studio One for majority of the production that I do, but I had FL Studio, I bought it a while back and I thought, heck, I'm gonna just make a beat in it and see what I can come up with. And this actually ended up being the track that I used. So uh, kind of cool. So let's get into the actual beat and we'll have a listen to what that sounds like. Cool. So that's the particular song that we're going to be looking towards. This is the process from start to finish. I want to share with you guys how it all works, uh, what's happening behind uh, all of this and uh, kind of break it all down for you. So hopefully you guys can either reproduce something similar in the sense of making your own song, or at least it gives you ideas on how to produce and create your own music as well. So First off, this was the, the part that I first started off with, very simple kind of arpeggiated type of bell sound. So that's the sound that I was using and I just really just went off with that sample um, and that kind of just you know, inspired me for the rest of the beat. So once I had that, I laid that down, I put that kind of all, I, when I produce stuff, I just usually have it in a section here. So I've got everything playing at once. And you can kind of see that's kind of how it all sounds at once. Then I'll sort of split it up and break it down into the sections that I want. So when I first laid this out, I actually had the chorus at the start here. Uh, but when I was listening to the track, I was comparing it to other tracks that I hear currently out now. And uh, they sort of build up differently. It depends on how you want your song to really go. But um, I felt like I wanted it to kind of ramp up and then kind of just slow down a bit, sort of building up and then kind of just slowing down a bit and then building up again right at the end until it finally uh, hits the peak. So that's kind of the idea that I went for with this track. Um, then I used Omnisphere to kind of fill in the sounds uh, here, which you can kind of hear this is a sample that you've got. <laughs> And um, that is really another part of the track that kind of just brings in some of the actual differences to the track as well. Just really just thinking about the process, I was just going in the same key. So this actually is in key uh, C sharp, this track. And I was just listening to the track and I thought, what can I add into it to make it sound more just interesting to the ear? So uh, this is kind of how I went. So I just went with these notes and that just worked out really well. Uh, so once I got that, then I was just listening to the drums and I kind of just had the whole entire kit kind of thinking of the pattern in my head. 
and the kick was really just a basic kind of kick so just really on the one and as you can hear here it just kind of plays out or solo that So it's really a simple kind of pattern. There's nothing too specific to it. I didn't want it to be too crazy because I was thinking of how can I rap over this? And then, you know, once you add all the other parts into it, it really does start to add up. So you don't want to go too wild uh, whilst you're producing the, the actual track. You want to leave space for the artist, this is myself, uh, to be actually get on the track and then put your own aspect to that track as well. Um, another thing I want to bring to your attention as well is really the the hardest part I think in in producing your own music is when you're producing a track, yes, you can kind of produce it to how you want it to sound. Um, but kind of you start to get into a pattern where, especially if you're listening to the just the main parts of the track, like say for example, the intro, or just a section of the track, if you're repeating that over and over again, it kind of starts to get stale in your head. Um, so what I recommend is try and move as fast as you can in creating the actual track. Um, don't sit on it too long, just, you know, you know, going out to the track, like, you know, this sounds sick and I want to listen to it. Don't do that too long because if you do, you'll kind of get stuck uh, just vibing out to it and you never actually end up finishing the track. So vibe to it, but don't vibe to it too long. And once you've kind of created it, um, and you've just split it out. You don't necessarily have to split it all out in the first day that you created. You can if you if you feel like you've got that energy to do it. Um, but in the creation process, you want to just make sure that it's actually laid out how you would usually um, either your style of rapping or if you're planning on putting an artist on it, their style of rapping. So just try and lay it out how you think that they would want to listen to the track. So um, I kind of just added these little features in here later on. So this is like a, a crash type thing. Um, so I had that crash in there and I was just messing around with different ideas to try and get um, different parts of the track to really sit right. Uh, so the drums are quite simple. I'll just solo the drums for you so you can kind of hear those. And another thing I'll share with you as well is just a little bit of a secret, uh, but I've got the sub, which is coming out of Sublab, which is mentioned there. You can see it labeled. Okay, so specifically the three things I was thinking about when I was creating the drums was the hi-hats. Um, hi-hats are super important to create the rhythm in the track. Um, they're also good to just be ear candy sometimes. The other part was the snare. Um, so the snare is only hitting twice in this particular uh, four bar loop. So you've got a snare there and in the snare, you can kind of see it's quite straightforward. It's just one hit on the C note and then with the hi-hats you can kind of see i'll just go back to that um, with the hi-hats you can see with those uh, what i've got going on here is i've got some hi-hats just going along c and then i pull them down here so they're quite low uh, in the register so it really does it just creates a bit of an ear candy happening here and then it goes back up and i've also got them kind of just different uh, levels of velocity so it doesn't make them sound like they're just all the same um, you can use a, a plugin inside of FL Studio that does change the velocity, but sometimes I just do it manually just because I prefer the sound of the manual velocity. Uh, so that's kind of the vibe that I was going for with that, um, with the drums there. And then when it just all came together, I was like, yeah, this is fire. I need to get this track um, printed and start working on it. So I decided to just do minimal kind of mixing. So I'll just kind of show you what I did with the mixing. Uh, first off, when you get all these tracks, you can highlight all of these. If you double click, it highlights all of it. And you can actually go up to here and then you can split by channel, which allows you to split each thing by channel, putting it in each section. And then when you lay it out inside of this, it will be individually tracked. Uh, so that's kind of cool. That's one neat thing that uh, if you don't know about that, um, again, I'm not hugely into FL Studio. I don't use it a whole lot, so I'm still learning some of the, the stuff that's in here, but I like it a lot. Uh, it makes things simple. Um, with Sublab, I was mentioning that earlier. I'll just show you kind of the process behind this. I used the 808 signature, but then I've edited Sublab to kind of sound how I wanted it to, so the 808 really worked well. Uh, you can kind of see how much drive I've used here, some compression as well and uh, minimal width. I didn't want a whole lot of width on that. I've used the filter sparingly to cut out some of the high end stuff. Uh, and uh, you can kind of see with the velocity of the volume, the filter and uh, the pitch, they kind of cut off really quickly. 
uh, release times are like that, but you know, you can kind of hear what it sounds like when I play it. So it's very neat goes to the tempo of the track that's kind of what i was also looking at um being at 156 this is the tempo of this particular track it really suited how i wanted it to be so that worked really well um with going back to the the mixing phase inside of here there's not a whole lot of mixing happening here i dropped the beat out um apart from a few things that i did on these tracks uh, you can kind of see it's all kind of just left alone but um the mixing phase i really just went into studio one to do that so i want to show you some of that as well so i'll close that fl studio uh, for this part of the track i'll just want to show you kind of how it all came together the production side of things and then once we get into the mixing phase we'll go through that as well so let's go into studio one i'll just exit out of this 